Cannabis is a drug crop with a long history in Africa. Similarly, like coca and opium poppy, it has been under international control for nearly a century. Official efforts were successful in driving cannabis production underground and limiting its contribution to citizens' livelihoods. They were unable, however, to eradicate the crop. Many African countries that have long prosecuted citizens for cannabis-related offenses are now promoting legal cannabis cultivation. Ten countries have passed laws to legalize medical and scientific production in the last five years. Lesotho, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Uganda, Malawi, Zambia, Ghana, Eswatini, Rwanda, and Morocco are among them. South Africa has also legalized adults' private cultivation of cannabis plants for personal consumption. The cannabis industry in Africa is expected to exceed a $7 billion valuation by 2023, owing to rising demand and increased legalization across the continent. This opens up opportunities for African countries that have previously failed to capitalize on cash crops. African countries have the ideal climate for cultivating the crop. There is significant export potential, as well as potentially significant local consumption demand. The possibilities are truly limitless. There are also opportunities in secondary services like consulting, regulatory, and legal. All of this will contribute to the anticipated growth in the African cannabis industry. Two major factors have contributed to the liberalization of cannabis policy in Africa. One example is lobbying by local activists. Cannabis use is still illegal in the majority of African countries. Even in the most conservative, there are emerging debates that will ultimately lead to cannabis policy reforms. The emergence of the global legal cannabis industry, which is expected to grow to nearly $200 billion by 2028, is another factor. Policy changes are aimed at opening up channels for scarce foreign exchange revenue, which is critical for boosting stagnant economies. However, there are still policy and practical issues that must be addressed if cannabis sector reforms are to have a positive impact on the economy and citizens' livelihoods. These include the need to ensure that ordinary producers participate in the legal cannabis sector. This is because emerging regulatory frameworks appear to favor large corporations over smallholder farmers. The liberalization of cannabis policy in Africa is primarily for medical and scientific production. Cannabis cultivation, trade, and use for non-medical purposes remain illegal. Marijuana consumption is prohibited in the majority of African countries. Marijuana has been stigmatized and has a negative public perception. Most people believe that marijuana consumption reduces the brain's thinking capacity, which demotivates marijuana farmers. The new regulations do not cover the production of many smallholder farmers, who have historically been custodians of the cannabis plant and knowledge. Governments throughout the region have mostly prohibited the cultivation and consumption of cannabis due to moral concerns and the understandable possibility of abuse. It means that their cannabis-related businesses continue to be illegal. Among other requirements, producers must obtain a state license. Cannabis manufacturing, distribution, and research all require different licenses and fees. In Zimbabwe, these can range from US $5,000 to US $50,000. The fee for a gazette permit in South Africa ranges from our 9200 US $579.27 for an export permit to our 25200 US $1,586.69 for a manufacture permit. Zambia charges a yearly fee of $250,000. Lesotho and Uganda have reported the highest license fees. They range from hundreds of thousands to a couple of million dollars. These fees are unaffordable to the average farmer in these countries. Tax clearance certificates, bank guarantees, cultivation guidelines compliance, and security guarantees are also required. These preconditions are intended by authorities to secure an end product that could be easily abused if not properly regulated. They appear to be designed to ensure that governments do not lose tax revenue as a result of the emerging industry. However, the limited scope of legal production, 
high license fees and business startup costs, and other factors are likely to limit the participation of many smallholder producers who lack the resources to establish legal cannabis businesses. There is a serious risk of corporate capture of the legal cannabis industry and the exclusion of smallholder producers. Many smallholder producers cannot afford the license fees because they are so high. This leaves corporations as the primary license holders. In Uganda, for example, the government has currently licensed only one company to produce medical cannabis. The stringent rules include a $5 million minimum capital requirement and a bank guarantee. Most aspiring producers will be put off by this. In Zimbabwe, the government has licensed dozens of new investors for medical cannabis cultivation and processing in 2021. Established agribusinesses and large-scale commercial farmers are the beneficiaries. Similar concerns prompted small farmers in Malawi and South Africa to protest the licensing process in November 2020 and April 2021, respectively. Other license conditions are also a barrier for smallholder producers. In South Africa, applicants must meet certification requirements, be registered, and provide police clearance, among other requirements. Those with prior criminal records for the illegal production, possession, or consumption of cannabis, in particular, may face difficulties obtaining police clearance. A legal cannabis industry is emerging, with smallholder producers playing a limited role. This limits the industry's ability to help the poor and the majority in general. Furthermore, limiting legal cannabis production to medical and scientific purposes excludes many existing smallholder producers from production. This further criminalizes them. It also establishes a dual model in which established businesses benefit from the reforms while small producers' activities remain illegal and suppressed. It's all well and good to legalize cannabis production for medical purposes. The biggest challenge that African countries face is ensuring the participation of ordinary citizens and producers in the industry. Corporate takeover of the industry is a real possibility. Despite the fact that cannabis is illegal, the illegal cannabis industry exports $13 billion to Europe each year and employs over 1 million people. Because most governments are currently focused on licensing companies that use cannabis for medicinal purposes, the product's recreational use has thrived on the black market. As a result, in order to fully capitalize on the opportunities presented by both medical and recreational cannabis, the appropriate regulatory framework must be in place. Countries located along the equator have enormous potential to contribute to cannabis innovations for the production of medicine, paper, ecobricks, and plastics by improving regulations and legal frameworks. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories.